Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct View. Sam Ibidiganji reporting for the Media Speaks. If I am waving at you now, you are on low def, and that is used for streaming live. If you are not streaming live, then poof. Hopefully it appeared. If not, I look really stupid. But that is the high def, which is you guys. And uh, that's where most of you are going to want to watch if you are not viewing live. In any event, friends, we are going to move straight into the news. Plummeting oil prices could destroy the banks that are holding trillions in commodity derivatives. This is wonderful news. Yes, I'm fully aware that a major banking incident would create a temporary but very devastating collapse. But this is what we would need to happen, at least to some degree, to put us back where we need to be. This, they need to be exposed and they need to crash. The problem in this country is the mega banks is the big banks. Yes, there are certain good people that work at banks, and uh, my brother would uh, definitely attest to that. But they're, as a whole, a very evil and destructive entity. America's best days existed prior to when the effects of the central bank took effect. Now, there were some years after they took effect where things were fine because it took a while for them to truly hurt us. Well, have you noticed that... Any, any globalist, any New World Order lover is finding this gas issue to be a big problem. However, those of us that actually care about America as in not part of the UN, America as part of America is delighted by this. And I've said it a hundred times. It's, it's not that I'm a big Sarah Palin, fan, Sarah Palin fan. I've never voted for the woman. But she was right about one thing, drill, baby, drill. And anything that's good for America is automatically listed as bad uh, for the rest of the world. So it poises common sense against the New World Order. The reason that gas prices are doing this is because we've allowed ourselves to get involved in the New World Order to begin with to such a staggering degree that we now are looking at issues where things were propped up where they shouldn't be in order to gain leverage over other economy. Basically, we've been paying more for gas for a very long time than we need to be, both because of the reason that I just gave you as well as the lie that is man-made global warming. This is Michael Snyder, economic collapse could the rapidly falling oil prices trigger a nightmare scenario for the commodity derivatives market well you shouldn't be in the derivatives market as we've said here repeatedly the big wall street banks did not expect plunging home prices to cause a mortgage-backed securities implosion back in 08 and their models did not anticipate a decline in the price of oil by more than 40 dollars in less than six months this time either if the price of oil stays at this level or goes down even more, someone out there is going to have to absorb some absolutely massive losses. Losses that they got greedy and invested over their heads in to begin with, and they invested in it knowing that they were costing you more money when they did it. If the price of oil stays, or excuse me, in some cases, the losses will be absorbed by oil producers, but many of the big payers in the industry have already locked in the high prices for the next year through a derivatives contract. You know what? You know when you issue a derivative contract that this could happen. Therefore, shut the hell up. You knew the risks when you got in it. Tired of this. Bail me out because I made a bad decision, BS. Not just a bad decision. I greeted my whole life into it. The companies enter into these derivatives contracts for a couple of reasons. Number one, many lenders do not want to give them any money unless they can show that they have locked in a price for their oil that is higher than the cost of production. You can't blame them for that. Secondly, derivative contracts protect the profits of oil producers from drastic swings in the marketplace. These dramatic swings rarely happen, but when they do, they can be absolutely crippling. So basically, everyone that got involved in this knew what they were getting involved in at the time they did it, but now they went bailed out because their bet went bad. 
Ridiculous. You know what? My best friend Dan and I, we bet beers all the time for this, uh, for games, NFL games, all the time. Do you know why we don't bet hundreds? Because we can't afford to bet hundreds. If you are going to get into this, then get ready to pay what you owe or don't make the bet. Do not expect us to bail you out and to somehow cry when it folds like a rusty lawn chair under a fat man. So, I mean, it's more whining from the 1% is what it is. That's, that's basically all it is. Um, Continental Resources, the pioneering U.S. driller that bet big on North Dakota's back-in shale patch when its rivals were looking abroad, is once again flying in the face of convention, cashing out some $4 billion worth of hedges in a huge gamble that oil prices will rebound. That is their bet. They don't need to be whining if that bet folds. I am so unbelievably tired of it. Uh, as he writes at the end here, he says, I keep on saying it, and I will keep on saying it until it happens. We are heading for a derivative of the too big to fail banks and out of the control gambling out of Wall Street. But they didn't. Now a day of reckoning is rapidly approaching. Yeah, and you and I, Joe Taxpayer, are supposed to pay for it. B.S. Uh, this is from Kit Daniels, continuing along the same line. Gas heading below $2 a gallon in southern U.S. Gas prices are headed below $2 a gallon in the southern U.S. due to the region's low taxes and numerous refineries as oil prices continue to fall. But the decline points to the beginning of a global recession. No, the money that's saved on this is going to go for people to pay either Obamacare or the fines from not getting in it. So don't act like it's some great windfall when we just got hosed. I'm not an idiot. Also, the price goes down. Well, you know what? Cell phones put a lot of the pager makers out of business. How many of you remember pagers? Overnight, when cell phones blew up, it went from a rich person's device to an everyone's device. Happened in like two years. Bam! There were no pagers anymore. Well, why don't we bail out all the pager makers that might have went bankrupt because they bet on a market that got sank by another market? It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, why would we do it here? Why would we feel bad in this instance? And that is what happens. It says the price of crude oil is falling towards $40 a barrel, thank God. And while this benefits American consumers, God forbid, especially those in the South, it indicates a global recession because production alone is unlikely to cause such a drastic decline in oil prices. Again, these were artificially propped up to begin with. OPEC was a, a monopoly criminal enterprise that I am happy to see go the way of the dinosaur. May it never recover. Take your turbines and get the hell out of here. Oil's decline is proving to be the worst since the collapse of the financial system in await and threatening to have the same global impact of falling prices three decades ago that led the Mexican debt crisis and the end of the Soviet Union, Blurberg reported. And again, I don't mean all Arabs when I say that before I get a bunch of hate BS. I'm just saying that these are the 1% of the worst of the worst. These are some of the Saudi Arabia swines that have never been on our side to begin with. The prices are declining, it says, partially due to the organization of petroleum exporting countries' decision not to cut production to try to force the U.S. shale industry out of business. Well, these are more people that have invested in fracking, which is not a great idea. And I say let the chips fall where they may. They all invested in this when smart people were buying gold and silver. So let's let it play out. Don't expect the American taxpayer to pick it up. It's already beginning to work. It says several American oil exploration and drilling companies are slowing down because the industry is already close to unprofitable. That's what greed does to you. In 2016, when OPEC completes this objective of cleaning up the American marginal market, the oil price will start growing again. Industry insider Leonoid Fedden told Bloomberg, the U.S. shale boom is on for a par like the dot-com boom. B.S. It was over-invested in to begin with, and this is what happens when prices level out. It is a sign of the coming collapse. It is not the cause of the coming collapse. That is the correct view. All right, guys. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, moving on to a different topic here. 
Congress passes bill which grants unlimited access to communications of every American. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because, God alive, I would hope all of you know by now what is being done and how we are being spied on. However, just to go over it one more time, since it does matter, yes, every American is being spied on. Computers are looking for keywords and they are sending it to people who are looking very likely somebody is seeing what you text and what you send which is a breach of your fourth amendment rights even if you don't care about it it didn't say it was god granted because you cared about it they said it was god granted according to congressman and i would vote for this man for president justin amash Congress had just passed a bill which grants the government and law enforcement in limited, unlimited access to the communications of every American. When the Michigan lawmaker discovered uh, that the Intelligence Authorization Act for SY 2015 had been amended with a provision that authorizes, quote, the acquisition, retention, and dissemination, end quote, of all communications data from U.S. citizens, he desperately attempted to organize a roll call vote on the bill because he's a wonderful American. However, it says the legislation was passed yesterday 325 to 100 via a voice vote, a green light for what Amish describes as one of the most egregious sections of law that I've encountered during my time as a representative. The bill allows for private communications of Americans to be scooped up without a court order and then transferred to a law enforcement for criminal investigations, therefore negating the Fourth Amendment. The legislation effectively codifies and legalizes mass warrantless NSA surveillance on the American people with barely a whimper of debate. So basically we've elected uh, most Republicans for absolutely nothing with the exception of a few gems here like Justin Amish. Um, go to Paul Joseph Watson's article, it's on Prison Planet, and you can read the entire transcript of uh, Justin Amish, the hero's uh, plea. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange, reminding you you want to check out the Arcadia Grill. Now, don't zone out. We've still got a few stories left that you're going to want to hear. I just want to let you know that the Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue in downtown Canton, is serving up some of the absolute most delicious food you've ever eaten. Go there, friends. Go to the bar. Get yourself a good drink. Head up. Get the ravioli. Maybe get some spaghetti and enjoy some of the best food you've ever had. You won't be able to quit eating the Italian bread. Guys, this was interesting. It's brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. If you enjoy reading really good fiction, written well with um, with a twist. No, no one does it quite like he does. Do me a favor. Go to Facebook.com and look up Mike McLaughlin. Tell him that you heard about his stories from The Correct Views. Scientists urge governments to turn old TV frequencies into free super Wi-Fi. This is dedicated to DJ Aram of Passing Time. I'm always telling him about this. I'm like nerd kind of excited about it. Don't worry, we'll get to all kinds of uh, uh, political BS next. This is just something that I thought was relevant. So don't zone out because this is a remarkable idea. This is actually some good news. Don't you ever get tired of hearing bad news? Okay, listen. Governments should sack plans to auction off old television frequencies to the highest bidder and instead use the bandwidth for free super frequency Wi-Fi if they want to boost the economy, scientists have said. Old television frequencies are becoming available for other uses around the world thanks to a switch from analog to digital transmission. However, while governments are for the most part auctioning these off to whoever is prepared to pay the most, usually mobile phone and networks, they should instead be using the frequencies to create free-to-use wide-range Wi-Fi. Scientists from Karluhi, I don't know, K-A-R-L-S-R-U-H-E, go for it, Institute of Technology in Germany have said, no wonder they call it KIT, the new super Wi-Fi would have a far wider range than existing Wi-Fi networks, which are mostly transmitted over wireless local area networks at frequencies of 2 gigahertz or above. 
Wi-Fi transmitted over old TV frequencies could be transmitted at lower frequencies than traditional Wi-Fi, resulting in a far wider area covered. This super Wi-Fi coverage could even be as big as several kilometers in radius, a massive improvement on existing networks. This would mean that privacy, uh, pricey, excuse me, mobile services such as 4G were no longer required, which the scientists believe would lead to more mobile internet use and a wealth of economic benefits. Again, more people profiting than just the few people that are in 4G. More money spread to more places via freedom. It says implementation of our approach would have far-reaching consequences, said Arnd Weber of the Institute of Technology Assessment and Systems Analysis at KIT. Individuals, institutions, and companies would be far less dependent on expensive mobile communications networks in conducting their digital communication. This would also be of great economic benefit. In addition to providing direct measurable cost savings, the technology could, according to the researchers, result in the development of a host of new technologies just as existing Wi-Fi has. It could also provide direct benefits during disaster scenarios as a means of providing updates and enabling communication. However, the big challenge here is convincing governments that this is the right vote. But look at the last horrible vote they did. That's why I'm reporting on it. Contact your representative your senator, contact your government and let them know that you want this to happen. I'm not just talking about this for no reason, people. It says many have argued that these frequencies are common property and therefore should be made available to the public free of charge. Amen. A view that has been opposition from a number of people, including the Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Coes. Keep in mind, Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize, so, I mean, Nobel is a tarnished name. Coase argued that the frequencies should be auctioned off to ensure that they are most effectively used and the money used by governments to fund other services. So, basically, the rich people know how to use these effectively, but not the general public. This is the reason that I do this show. Right freaking there! It's BS! The common man is better equipped to lead his own life than government. The reason you are being cheated in life is because government has heaped too many restrictions on you. Otherwise, you would be able to accomplish far more than you've ever accomplished. Don't argue with me on this. It is a correct view. It says others have argued that congestion would make these lower frequency networks unworkable. However, Weber and his colleague... Jens Elsner argue that it is possible to avoid such congestion with the right technological approach. And I say that is 100% true. Because it is. All right, guys. Bloomberg.com. HSBC Goldman rigged metal prices for years, suit says. This is another instance of why you should buy gold. Go to the uh, mediaspeaks.com and look up how to live without banks. Or just type in how to live without banks, media speaks. It'll come up. It will tell you how to buy gold, silver, platinum, copper, whatever, without any paper trip. Goldman Sachs Group and HSBC Holdings PLC were sued in New York over claims that they conspired for eight years, that's most of a decade for you Usher fans, to manipulate prices of the precious metals platinum and palladium in what plaintiff's lawyers say is the first such class action lawsuit in the U.S. And it should be, because people that have invested in gold and silver have been cheated. And I'm explaining to you exactly how it happened here. Standard Bank Group Limited and a metals unit, BASFSE, the world's largest chemical company, were also sued. Good. The four companies used inside information about client purchases and sale orders to profit from price movements from the metals used in products ranging from jewelry to cars, according to complaint, a complaint filed yesterday in Manhattan Federal Court. So basically, what they did is deliberately manipulated the price in their favor so that investors would lose. That's what you just heard here at 4.20 a.m., 12.16, 2016. And you know what? 
There are a lot of people celebrating 420 right now that are sitting there, wow, this stuff matters. You know what? That's why I'm out here. I'm going to wake up one person at a time, and I don't care if I only wake up one person. I don't care. This BS has got to end. How is it that they can just cheat thousands of people, and yet everybody is just zombified? Wake up, people. Guys, I got two more stories I want to get to. Somebody very near and dear to me, I won't say who it is. It might be Christelle. <laughs> It has like 97 e-cigs and smokes cigarettes like the little train that could. They don't taste the same. That's because you're addicted to the taste of carbon monoxide. That is to say poison, which you're not getting in other devices. Here is another way for everybody that wants to quit. And you can try to make people that you love quit like I try to make her quit every day. This is by E.J. Dixon at the Daily Dot. This is wonderful news. There are tons of wearables that are targeted at modifying your bad behavior. I tried one of them, the Pavlock, the author writes, to curb my eating habits at Thanksgiving dinner to some success. But those devices mainly work by making you more conscious of your bad habits rather than specifically targeting the habits themselves. So maybe that is Christelle's uh, problem here with the e-cig. The, the Sagentia Smart Stop, however, is different. That means excuses will be ending. It is a wearable smart band that helps you quit smoking by pumping nicotine directly into your system at the exact time that you are craving a cigarette. So you won't need to take an actual smoke break. I know Christelle's uh, uh, excuses, and they go outside and they smoke it and I have to smoke. Nope, not anymore. Launched by the UK design team in partnership with the Silicon Valley firm Chrono Therapeutics, the wearable is essentially a connected bracelet that delivers nicotine to your system 24-7, but increases the dosage at times when you would typically step outside for a smoke break. So it is tailored to your own habits. The bracelet is also connected to an app that provides real-time encouragement to help users quit smoking. Wish they'd make this for those that celebrate 420. In this sense, it says the smart stop differs from it. Other smoking cessation methods like the patch or nicorette, which do not come with digital support systems and typically only circulate small levels of nicotine throughout your system during the day. That's why Alan Levy, the CEO of Chronotherapeutics, sees the Sagentia as the game changer in smoking cessation. Also, let me point out, even if these don't make you quit smoking, if you are using these instead of cigarettes, then you are doing far greater, almost no damage to your body whatsoever. I said almost before you harass my comment line. And friends, that brings us to the dum de dum de dum de dum de of the day. Uh, this is VictoriaAdvocate.com. Victoria police officer invested, investigated for tasering a driver who was 76 years old. You want to know what will make you even more angry? The 76-year-old didn't break the law. A Victoria police officer is under investigation after a 76-year-old man accused him of using excessive force during a traffic stop. Well, accused he did. The officer, Nathaniel Robinson, 23, was placed on administrative duty Friday pending the outcome of an internal investigation into whether he violated the use of fair policy when he tased Victoria resident Pete Vasquez said Chief J.J. Craig. The officer was hired after graduating from the police academy two years ago, so he is a bit of a cub. The incident happened Thursday after Robinson saw an expired inspection sticker on the car. Vasquez was driving back to Adams Auto Mart 2801 North Lawrence Street, where he helps with mechanical work. Vasquez got out of the car, which is owned by the car lot, attempting to get the manager. He pointed out to the officer that the dealer tags on the back of the car, which would make it exempt from having an inspection, that is not opinion. Therefore, he did not have to have it done, and he was legal from that point onward. There was no questions to be asked. 
Police dashboard camera video shows Robinson arresting Vasquez for the expired sticker. It goes on, when the officer first grabbed Vasquez's arm, and the older man pulled it away. God forbid you would have instinct. Robinson then pushed Vasquez down on the hood of the police cruiser. The two fell out of the camera's video frame, but, Vasquez, but police said the officer used the taser on Vasquez twice while he was on the ground. He just acted like a pit bull, and that was it, Vasquez says. For a while, I thought he was going to pull his gun out and shoot me. Keep in mind, this is an old dude. Vasquez was handcuffed, placed in the back of the police cruiser, and taken to Citizens Medical Center, where he remained in police custody for two hours. Craig said the police department's dash cam footage raises some concerns. I would hope so. He decided to open the investigation after viewing the footage and was personally apologized to Vasquez for the incident. I would hope so. It says there are a number of things that can happen to the officer. He could, uh, his, his punishment could range from a letter of reprimand. That seems a bit light to me. Suspension without pay. I'm in favor of that one. Or termination. He was a bit of a cub. I'm not going to vote for termination, but for those of you that would vote for it, I certainly see your point. Let me go to a bigger point while, before I jump off here for the night, and I thank you for listening. We should not even have to have registration on our vehicles. We shouldn't. This is an encroachment. Where is this? Where is this? When you own something, it is yours. They can tax you once. Okay, why do you have to keep getting it again and again and again and again? And again? Well, you need to get your eyes examined. You should be able to get your eyes examined elsewhere then. See? We are, the cops should have never had the right to ever interfere because you shouldn't have to have tags to begin with. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange making more sense than anybody else you've heard all week signing off for The Media Speaks. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. And if you would like to donate to the show, please do, friends, because it costs more to do these than you would think. And every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. I would like to do this full time. I would like this to be what I do. You can make it happen. The correct views at hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless. And thank you so much for listening. Please share the video and give it a thumbs up when you subscribe.